everyone. Here is my submission for the Love Summer Art uh, hashtag event. Um, I'm going to be painting this pot, blue pot of lilies and everyone can paint along with me. Um, I'm just painting this from uh, a book um, of pictures of line art of flowers that I got at Michael's. So you can go look for that book. Um, I think it's, I can't remember what it's called because I don't know where it is right now, but um, I just basically uh, put this, trace this image. Uh, you could use transfer paper. You could use a light table. I happen to have a light table. Um, and transfer this image onto your watercolor paper. I'm using Strathmore um, watercolor paper. And I'm using uh, Distress inks because I wanted to play with them. And I wanted to do some, you know those blue pots that have that modeling effect on them? I wanted to use the Distress inks and uh, do that to the pot, so that's why I'm using them. So uh, I can't tell you the colors I'm using here because I forget. Uh, they're just in my palette there um, to the left. But um, I don't know, <laughs> blues and greens and it doesn't really matter. If you have blues and greens and reds and pinks, you can recreate this look. So you can go out and get that book from Michaels or any other flowers and you could paint along with me if you like. And if you don't want to do that, that's totally okay. You can just watch me paint. Um, I like doing that too. So uh, some people learn a lot from um, watching people paint. And I, I know I certainly do. So I'm just painting on the greens here. Um, I wet the leaf first with my uh, water brush here. And I'm tinting the water slightly. I just dip it in a little bit of green just so I could see where I'm putting my... Uh, my water so that's a, a good little tip or trick to do um, and then I'm painting the leaves green and then painting a little bit of that sort of rust rust red color on the edges of the leaves and I'm just being very free here with my washes I just this is the way I like to paint this is my favorite I like wetting it all down and then see I'm just dropping some blue in there so uh, I, I first put on the green and yellow, yellowish green color. Then I go in with a little bit of that red on the tips. And then in the, e in the end, I go in with the blue color to sort of make the leaves blue. So don't worry if it, at this point, if it looks weird. It's always gonna look weird as you're doing it. It's just the way painting is. <laughs> um, what makes a painting interesting is just a mix of colors that you wouldn't necessarily think go together you know um, people just think oh, I'll make the leaves green well you can put reds in there and purples and blues and uh, all different sorts of colors and the way the paints when you're doing this wet and wet wash the way they mix with with each other um, they just mix together in a in a pleasing way and it gives it dimension it really makes it look interesting so I'm just gonna paint these leaves uh, all the same way so you can just watch that and I'll come in again to speak about uh, the next thing that I'll do Okay, now I'm moving on to the lilies and I'm just wetting down uh, the stamen here 
and putting um, I just mixed like a yellowish yellowish rusty red brown color for those um, if you want your paintings to look realistic like in nature you want dull down colors you don't want bright greens and like Kuretake zig markers you don't want it to look like that if you want it to look real because that just gives it a uh, an unreal look when their colors are that bright because they're not that bright in nature so you see I'm just um, here I'm mixing purples and reds and because the purple is duller and the red is on the rustier side um, I think it's on the rustier side it's dulled down anyway it's muted um, they mix together nicely to look somewhat real and uh, I just, um, I forgot to tell you that I, I just outlined this image in, um, with like a pit marker or a micron pen, so it's waterproof. Yeah, it's kind of a rust, not rusty, it's not rusty red, but it's kind of a rusty pink color. Um, and again, I'm just doing the same thing, tinting my water slightly so I can see where I'm putting it. And I'm just wetting down the whole surface first. Um, and then dropping in the color and that's my favorite way just wet it down and then drop it in anyone can do this um, anyone can do this because all I'm doing is just mixing a bit of purple mixing a bit of red and just dotting as you can see and then I'm not fussing with it too much I'm letting it do what it wants to do I'm letting it um, interact with the red as it will and I like that because then it's a surprise you never really know you know what it's gonna do and how it's gonna look so I just continue on that way with the flowers um, as you I think you saw there that I brought out I wanted some purple like a lavender color so I brought out my uh, what's that called aqua letra set aqua marker and I scribbled it on, um, oh, I think I did it here. I can't remember what I do this, did that later, but I think you saw that there. I scribbled with my letter set purple marker um, because that sort of gives me the purple in here. So again, I'm just dotting. Um, I'm dotting purple on the outside and the pinkish red on the inside. So I'm just going to let you watch me do the flowers. Okay, just a note here. As you can see, um, I didn't wait until the stamen were dry to go in. Um, that's okay. I'm not, um, this isn't a uh, really precise picture. I really wanted it to be flowy and um, it's totally okay that that yellowish brown seeps into what you're doing there with the flower. Um, you can always go in and just lift it off if you don't like it and you know just or put more color on and you'll see me doing that. I'm, um, see I'm just lifting some off there um, letting the water go and then lifting it off it's never permanent that's the thing with watercolor you just see how the yellow is bleeding there I'm totally fine with that though so I'm just sort of lifting it off and I just keep this is kind of a meditative process when you let go with the watercolor like this um, and just let it go because you just keep doing it over and over and playing with it and watching it and it's really it's sped up here so you can't really tell that but I'm just I'm just letting it all hang out here so that's that's the uh, I really enjoy doing that with the watercolor rather than being so like anal retentive about it and you can always go back um, you know, this is just the first wash. I can uh, I go back and um, tighten things up with uh, some detailed accents here and there, uh, so it looks a little better. Like right here, it got too warm in this leaf for me. I wanted the leaves kind of, I wanted the 
lily leaves to be sort of greenish yellow but I wanted those big flat looking ones sort of on the blue side I'm not sure what plant that is my mother would know she's a green thumb <laughs> but I wanted those bottom ones to be a little more on the blue side so you'll see later I'll go in and and put more blue into them and uh, that's what's so great about watercolors so I'm just gonna continue on with the flowers So you might have noticed there that I left two petals. I did a petal and then skipped one, did a petal and then skipped one. So, uh, you know, so it would have a little um, definition, keep the red and the purple away from each other. I let each petal dry in between. So now I'm just going back and doing those um, petals after the other two somewhat dried. Um, it's just a habit. I didn't really have to do it with this flower actually because they're all, it's all, you know, it's not a tight one. It's not a tight painting and I'm just letting it all flow. But it's just out of habit, I think, <laughs> that I do that. But uh, see, look at that. I'm just smearing it all over and eh, letting the yellow get in there because I don't mind. I don't care. And quest also, this is a really quick painting too. So here, um, I'm going to mix some purple and blue and I'm making a brown so right now I'm mixing the the colors for the earth in the pot so I'm putting some purple some blue some green and some orange mixing it all together and guess what that gives you brown so there's my earth color there so you can see it's like a reddish earth brown color and uh, I'm just going in to put, um, to base the whole thing and put, put in the, the base dirt there. Okay, so you'll notice here I'm just put, dropping in a little of that brown in the center of these flowers. That's just to give it, uh, because I know I've, I've got a dark on my brush, so I'm just putting I'm putting it up there in the top flowers too. I'm just um, establishing some shadows really with that brown color. So, I mean, I didn't mix up a new color. I'm just using the same brown to establish um, a shadow in various parts. And again, I'm not happy even looking at it now. I know when I painted it too, I'm not happy with the yellow or with the the warm color of those big leaves and I want them blue looking. So I'm changing the color here. Uh, what am I doing? What am I doing? I think I'm putting, uh, I don't know what I did there, sorry. <laughs> oh, I know what I'm doing. I mixed blue, as you can see there. I'm just putting blue over the whole thing because it was looking kind of, uh, because of those two, three stalks going through it, is looking kind of broken up and different colors. Like the red wasn't flowing over into the leaf like the other one. So it ended up looking sort of like a striped, the wrong way leaf color. So, um, I'm just going over it again with uh, 
just a blue wash so that's called glazing I just went over the whole thing with just um, like a very light blue color now I'm just going over it um, because it's looking a bit weird so I'm I'm just going it all going over it with pure water and then lifting out the color just to sort of make it uh, more even as a whole and then I go over all the leaves with blue too not right now but I will do it later So it looks kind of funny here because of the way I filmed it. I had my iPhone. Um, I'm now fi filming with my iPad mini, but back then when I uh, painted this, I had my iPhone at an angle. So the pot looks really distorted. It's kind of funny um, because it's really zoomed in. But um, again, I'm employing that the uh, doing each leaf um, separately and skipping leaves and, uh, and I'm just doing the wet and wet technique where I'm just um, painting it blue basically um, I'm just experimenting really if you wanna if, I, if I'm honest about it I'm just uh, seeing what these distress inks do because I'm not used to painting them I'm used to painting them in really quality uh, watercolors but I wanted to play with that the inky uh, technique of lifting spots out and the it's the blue pot that inspired me to do that that's what I want to do so I'm just um, laying down the blue here just going for um, just dropping in darker blues and letting it do what it will and um, I think to tell you the truth I'm kind of overworking it here a bit much watching myself uh, doing it now I think I would have rather just um, done it painted it in light washes of blue and then dropped in the blue and then let it leave it alone there I'm dropping in some it's either red I think it's red I'm just dropping in some red because I want them to go sort of a purplish color um, only in the center um, you see now here it's I'm lifting out the color again because it's too dark I, I didn't mean it to go for it to go that dark because um, these distress inks are different than watercolor paints. They're, they just act differently, so I'm not used to how they act. Um, so I'm just lifting it out. And then, uh, like, I wanted the model look. And so, um, I think I'm going to go back in with some darker again and just drop it in and let it let it seep in and go very organic because that's what I like. Okay, now we're getting to the pot, the whole point that inspired me to do this painting. So as you can see, I just left a little shine there on the right for some light. And as you can see on the left, I'm not touching that wet leaf. Um, it doesn't matter so much because they are the same color, basically. So it's not that big of a deal if I were to touch the leaf and the color would run into it. 
but I'm just used to doing that, not like, you know, leaving a space between the two colors. And so I'm just painting here and just leaving uh, a light um, shine on the rim. And this blue color, uh, I mean, this whole painting is inspired by this blue color. I, sorry, I can't remember what it is in uh, Distress Inks, but if you, uh, I think it might be the jeans one, what's it called, faded jeans or something. And it's a distinct color of those blue pots. So, <laughs> and then as you'll see later, I'll lift out uh, the spots in the pot. So, anyway, I will continue painting here uh, as it's almost done. Okay, so now I've uh, got out my dryer tool and because I need to dry that blue pot um, in order to put some more darker dots on and then some more clear water dots on and then lift them out because it just doesn't work if the pot is super wet. Um, so I'm just really right now creating a lot of texture on the bottom of the pot. Um, so I'm putting darker dots down now so that so I have my mid color base now I'm putting down darker dots of color and in a second I'm then gonna switch to clear water right now I'm gonna switch to clear water and then like I let that dry a bit in between and now I'm gonna put clear dots of water and lift them out so I'm also doing the same thing here on the leaves um, people who are used to the um, distress inks will know this technique. Um, you just draw on, well, people do it in cards, but I'm employing it in this painting. So I'm drawing on the line of clear water and then I'm eventually just gonna pat it out. So I'm sorry, I lost the footage of the pot down there. I did a shadow. I think I just grabbed it, um, grabbed my painting, uh, and, and did the shadow and missed doing the footage but here I'm just taking out the uh, everything's dried and I'm just uh, lifting out those lines in the flowers and I'm sorry you missed the footage of the pot there but as you can see all I did was flick some water on it and do little dots with my brush and then press that toilet paper roll on it to lift to lift it out. I let it sit there for a little bit though. 
Um, same thing with these leaves. I'm just drawing, trying to get some little veins out of there, you know. And there, you can see it's working. Um, but I'm not really happy with it. It doesn't look all that great. So I'm not sure. I think I fix it again. I just play with it. But um, I think it looks okay in the flowers. But I'm not too happy with the way that looks in the leaves. But whatever. This is just a quick summer painting, you know, to have some fun and learn about my distress inks. I'm <laughs> just doing my little oh, painting thing there. Flicking it around my finger. You know, like you do with a drumstick. <laughs> so right here, as you can see, I'm going in again after I'm sure it's dried for a little bit. And I'm just going in drawing a little shadow, um, implying, tricking the eye into making you think that's a lip that comes out. So with the dark shadow underneath and the shine on the top, that's how you create the three-dimensional lip on the pot. So here I'm just uh, I dip my brush in that brown again and really I'm just smearing the brown around it uh, around um, to create the illusion of shadow over those stems because um, the stems down there are going to be darker because they're you know in the pot and they're behind things so I'm just creating the illusion of um, that they're down in that dark spot so I'm just uh, creating a little bit more um, of those clear lines on the flowers uh, just like I did in the blue flowers and then the leaves and I'm going in here again with a little more dark because it seems to be really fading out so I'm just pumping up that reddish purplish color in the center and I'm not using a new red I'm using the same red as in the flowers and that, what that does is it creates a continuous look um, throughout the whole painting it keeps it tied together and what I really like about these distress inks are their um, well these colors anyway the muted colors I really like that because it's very easy to create something um, that looks very natural like I mean obviously I love painting flowers so it's very easy to make it look real when you've got these sort of dulled down colors so I love them okay here after assessing the painting again as a whole, um, I wanted those leaves to be a lot bluer. So as you can see, the top would be the pink going into the yellowish green of the leaves. And then as a transition, those greenish leaves, I wanted them bluer to transition down. As the eye goes down, you're leading the eye down into the then to the blue flowers and then to the final base of the pot. So that's why I'm putting the, I'm just doing a glaze of that blue color that I'm using just over the leaves. And so it'll basically tie everything together. And again, it will make it look a lot more real because real nature has all these colors mixed in. Like you may not think it, but um, you know, if you look at that plant that I'm talking about the, with the shaped leaves like that, you'll see they're like, bluish with um, green but also red at the tip it's just amazing anyway mother nature is a mad scientist I tell you so I'm just doing that blue wash over the leaves and touching up the pot here Okay, so I put some clear dots down again in the pot and just sat there for a little bit waiting and then pressed the toilet paper down on it and voila, check that out. 
it's doing exactly what I wanted to do, wanted it to do. So um, that's really cool, and it's helping me create that spotted pot that I wanted so much. Okay, and so I just painted over my nice shine there. I guess I decided it didn't look good. So I'm just going in with some more defining darks again, really bringing out the base of the painting um, because it's like an anchor too, right? It's like the base um, to balance off the bright colors at the top. Well, here we are at the end. So thank you so much for um, painting with me, or if you didn't paint with me, just watching me paint. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, please. It really helps my channel as um, it hasn't been out for long. And sub if you liked it. Thank you so much.